In 1985, a Swiss pathologist noted Alzheimer's disease-like changes, plaques and tangles, in the brains of about three-quarters of a small group of men and women in their 50s and 60s who had died from other causes, whereas most brains collected under age 30 were clean. But these studies just involved a few dozen people, based on thousands of autopsies. One can see what appears to be the first silent stages starting even in our 20s in about 10% of the population, and about 50% by age 50, uh, just as the first malignant cells in cancer fail to produce any clinically detectable symptoms, but represent a larger, more potentially life-threatening disease process, the presence of these tangles in the brain may constitute a true threat. The high prevalence of the first stage of the disease, even in the young, and its extraordinarily long duration— most people don't get diagnosed with Alzheimer's until their 70s— had not been fully appreciated until now. We now understand that neurodegenerative brain changes begin by middle age, and so does cognitive decline. We start losing brain function in our 40s. Before people are diagnosed with Alzheimer's, they're diagnosed with what's called MCI, mild cognitive impairment. Uh, that's when cognitive decline becomes clinically apparent. A few years later, Alzheimer's may be diagnosed, which then results in death. But we never knew what was happening before mild cognitive impairment was diagnosed, until now. There appears to be a slow decline in brain function, the buildup of plaques and tangles in the brain for decades before Alzheimer's is diagnosed. This finding potentially has profound implications for the prevention of dementia. We have to start early, before marked brain loss has occurred. The good news is that brain disease is not inevitable, even after age 100. Oldest woman in the world retained the brain power of those practically half her age. Had she not died from stomach cancer, she could have kept on thriving. Turns out there's no such thing as dying from old age. 42,000 consecutive autopsies were studied in centenarians, those living past 100, though most were perceived to have been healthy just prior to death, even by their physicians, succumbed to diseases in 100% of the cases examined. Not one died of old age. Until recently, you know, advanced age was considered kind of a disease in and of itself. But people don't die as a consequence of old age, as commonly assumed, but from diseases, most commonly heart attacks. But not in our 115-year-old. One of the most intriguing findings was that her body showed no significant atherosclerosis, and the arteries in her brain were clear as well. And that may have actually been one of the secrets to her mental clarity there is emerging consensus that what is good for our hearts is also good for our heads, which I'll cover next. In 1901, Augusta was taken to an insane asylum in Frankfurt, Germany, by her husband. She was described as a delusional, forgetful, disoriented woman who could no longer carry out her homemaking duties. She was seen by a Dr. Alzheimer, and was to become the case that made his a household name. On autopsy, he described the plaques and tangles in her brain that would go on to characterize the disease, but lost in the excitement of discovering a new entity, a clue may have been overlooked. He described arteriosclerotic changes, hardening of the arteries, within her brain. Uh, we typically think of atherosclerosis in the heart, but atherosclerosis involves virtually the entire human organism, our entire vascular tree. And one of the most poignant examples of the systemic nature is the link between coronary artery disease, de degenerative brain disease, and dementia. Back in the 70s, the concept of cardiogenic dementia was proposed. Dementia generated from the cardiovascular system. Since the aging brain is highly sensitive to lack of oxygen, since heart problems are so common, it was easy to imagine that's how dementia could result and now we have a substantial body of evidence that strongly associates atherosclerotic vascular disease with the number one cause of dementia, Alzheimer's disease. Autopsy studies, for example, have shown that individuals with Alzheimer's disease have significantly more atherosclerotic narrowing of the arteries within their brain. Uh, this is what our cerebral arteries should look like. 
open, clean, allowing blood to flow. This is what atherosclerosis in our brain arteries looks like. Clogged with fat and cholesterol, closing off the arteries, restricting blood flow to our brain. What kind of brain arteries do you want in your head? Normal resting cerebral blood flow. The amount of blood flow circulating within our brains is about a quart a minute, but we lose about a half percent a year. So by age 65, we may be down 15-20%, but this doesn't necessarily affect brain function as we have a built-in buffer. However, this age-related decline in cerebral blood flow can become critical to brain cell survival if an additional burden further lowers that flow. This reduction of blood flow can starve the brain of oxygen, cause silent little mini-strokes, brain atrophy, shrinkage, the cumulative effects of which appear to play a pivotal role in accelerating and augmenting the development and evolution of Alzheimer's disease. If you look at the amount of atherosclerosis in the arteries that specifically supply blood to critical memory and learning centers of the brain, this is the amount of severe atherosclerosis one sees in healthy, non-demented controls, compared to those with Alzheimer's disease. In light of such findings, some have even suggested the disease be reclassified as a vascular disorder. This is good news, though, because atherosclerosis is potentially reversible. These findings were confirmed in two larger studies, over a thousand autopsies each which found the same thing. Atherosclerosis in the brain is significantly more frequent and severe in those with Alzheimer's disease. This suggests that strategies proven to delay the progression of, of artery disease, like plant-based diets, may be useful in preventing or treating Alzheimer's disease. Of course, autopsy studies are a little late for that, so to assess the impact of intracranial arterial narrowing, on the progression from mild cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease, researchers followed 400 folks with cognitive impairment for four years, using CT angiography, special CAT scans, to evaluate the amount of brain artery blockage. The cognition of those with the least atherosclerosis in their heads remained pretty stable over the years, but those with more cholesterol buildup got worse, and those with the most blockage rapidly declined and the same with the ability to carry out activities of daily living. And it doubled the progression to full-blown Alzheimer's disease. An inefficient blood supply to the brain has very grave consequences on brain function. But does treatment of vascular risk factors like high blood pressure and high cholesterol actually make a difference? We didn't know until now. 300 patients with Alzheimer's, and those with all their vascular risk factors treated showed significantly less decline, less kind of slowed progression of their disease than those who went untreated. It is said that the goal of medicine is to provide patients with hope, and when there is no hope, with understanding. Well, for the first time in the history of this disorder, we have the chance to provide Alzheimer's patients with hope.